Okay, so what is comb filtering? Well, you've probably heard the term before in audio, but maybe you weren't too sure what it was. Well, basically what it is, comb filtering is nothing but sound wave, the interferences with sound waves. And it's most noticeably in the mid to high frequencies. And another video that we have out there on Power Alley, and I mentioned in the video that Power Alley was a form of comb filtering. It is, but it's not as um, observable as it is with uh, the mids and highs frequencies. So when we talk about comb filtering, we're talking about what is occurring in the mid to high frequency range. So getting on with it here. So we have a couple of speakers sitting on the stage and we can just say that these are 35 feet apart, maybe what a, a, a normal stage would be. So what's happening is that comb filtering starts occurring most noticeably and very prominently when you start adding more speakers to the stage, and I'll say more identical speakers. So when you have two speakers sitting on, uh, when you have two speakers, one's on the left, one's on the right, the comb filtering is, is very, very minimal. And if any of it starts occurring, it's usually way in the back, way in the back of the audience area. But the problem is, is that when people start introducing more speakers to their stage, uh, the, the comb filtering problem or the issue starts becoming very prominent. And comb filtering is uh, it's a term that, that um, it's a physics term. It said it goes back to um, interferences with the uh, audio waves. So, when you start adding more speakers to the stage, this is when it starts getting really bad. So more cabinets added basically e equals to the greater amount of comb filtering. So let's take a look at an overhead view of the stage, hope they give you a, maybe a better idea of what I'm talking about. So let's say we start out with a, a single speaker on each side of the stage, and it, it can be whatever you want, any kind of speaker you want, just something that's like a perhaps um, you know, a full range cabinet, or it could be even a mid and high range cabinet. But if we start out with one on each side, uh, this is where, uh, this is really the best chance for best sound reproduction is with only one speaker on each side of the stage. So the speakers, most of the speakers are 90 degrees horizontal and 40 degrees vertical. Uh, the horizontal coverage is important uh, to make sure that everybody hears the sound, but also uh, this is what also can cause uh, the comb filtering issues when you start adding more speakers. Uh, the 90 by 40 horns uh, are great for, for midfield, but they do not do very well for far field applications. So let's take a look at this. So let's say that this is a very basic uh, coverage of a 90 by 40 uh, horn and a speaker very basic coverage. Now here's what here's what happens when you start adding more speakers. Here's what happens uh, when you start adding a lot more speakers to the to the stage area. As you can see the coverage uh, it appears to be maybe be more but the problem is that looking at the lines you can see that there's no really there's no real definition of good alignment between the speakers. And so what happens is that you get this sort of this um, a wall of sound. Um, I'm going to use the term loosely, but it could be almost like a, um, a wall of a slight garbled sound that's coming out of the stage. And this is because there are frequency cancellations and frequency coupling that is occurring when you put uh, speakers together on the stage in a horizontal fashion. So what happens is, and I'm just going to use this as an example, let's say that the distance between the horns and the cabinets, not the distance between the cabinet itself, but the distance, let's say, between the horns or, or mid-range of a cabinet, I'm just going to say they're, they're like about one foot apart. So what happens is that the area, the listening area, you've got all these, these areas around that where the time alignment is off by one foot. So what that means is, let me get my mouse here, what that means is the time difference uh, between 
the sound coming out of this cabinet and reaching somebody here versus the sound coming out of this cabinet, let's say reaching the same person. This cabinet is going to be arriving later than this cabinet. Now already you have a time alignment and when you have time differences between when audio forms, uh, pardon me, audio waveforms, when they arrive at a location, if they're not in sync, this is what causes the phasing issue. And when phasing is of, when there's a lot of phasing taking place, and if the phase is off by, let's say by 180 degrees, what happens is that you get a cancellation of those frequencies. So as we can see here, you get the frequency cancellations and frequency coupling. Now coupling is good for certain things, but the cancellations, you, you really do not want frequency cancellations um, in your sound system. And as you can tell, everywhere that is off, you're by one foot, especially coming out of here, out of the sides, this means that there's a time difference between when the listeners are hearing, are hearing the musical source. So, and I'm talking about milliseconds of time, but, but milliseconds of time does make a difference. Um, and I'll have an example for you of an, of an audio sound of what a comb filtering sounds like. You've probably heard it before, but maybe you didn't know what you were listening to. So, when you more people that you have out here that are listening to these, listening to the, to these speakers, what happens, and th this is very common, is when you have a big seating area out here and you've got somebody that is, uh, you've got, let's see, you've got a person sitting here and you've got a person sitting over here. Well, this person that's sitting here says, hey, this sounds great, but the person sitting next to them may say, well, I can't hear what somebody's saying or I don't hear what you're hearing. That is due to comb filtering, which revolves around the frequency cancellations, which is what this person over here can't hear, versus frequency coupling, which is what this person over here may be listening to. Okay. Okay, so here is a sort of a rough drawing of what sound waves look like. And over here on this side, let's just say we have all three speakers that are all producing technically the same, the same frequencies. But the problem is nothing is aligned. And what comes out really is because of frequency cancellations and frequency coupling, you end up with this, a sort of a garbled, a garbage kind of a sound coming out. And the, the issue is, is that, that the problem with comb filtering starts immediately. As the sound waves come out of the speaker, they start immediately. And as the sound waves come out and, and the distance uh, from the cabinets can will also produce certain frequency cancellations and coupling based upon the frequency that's coming out. Lower frequencies require more distance for the cancellations and coupling to occur versus the higher frequencies which may only need a few inches. So a few inches, maybe a foot away from the cabinets, you could have frequency cancellations as well as coupling. But then given perhaps maybe 10 feet away, 10 feet, 10 or so, 15, maybe 15 feet away, you could have other frequencies, uh, other cancellations, as well as coupling with, with other frequencies. And really, this is, this is a big physics thing that is occurring out here. So just by adding, uh, I said, additional speakers, let's see, not including the single ones that you started with, but when you start adding other speakers, it really turns into a big, uh, big physics mess of audio. And just as I said, a lot of frequency cancellations and coupling taking place. And once again, this, redu this causes this uh, phasing issue. So going back to the stage, let's take a look at this. When you have just one speaker on each side, you get an even amount of sound coming out. And I'm sure you probably have heard uh, something called point source in audio. This is what this is. A single speaker is point source, but when you start adding more, you start introducing a lot of physics issues. So on each side of the stage here, because we have one speaker, that's considered a point source. 
nothing's garbled. When it comes out, everything is very cohesive. Okay, so the term comb filtering, as maybe some of you have figured out, re represents a comb. And the lobes here in the comb represent uh, audio. And if we look at this, the open areas in the comb, these would be where the cancellations are occurring in the sound wave. Now, let's look at this comb. Now, tilt this comb, if you will, in, in your mind horizontally. So the seating area would be out here. The people would be all sitting out here. And what the people would be hearing would be as if these waveforms were coming straight at them. So these, these open areas right here would be these lobes of cancellations. These are the areas where people aren't going to hear certain frequencies. And then these other areas over here, which we'll represent here in red, uh, these would be the lobes of coupling. These are going to be the frequencies that people hear really loud. And unfortunately, right next to it are going to be the lobes where people don't hear anything with those frequencies. And because um, with, you know, with bands and musical source, you've got frequencies covering a whole range of audio. So what happens is that super high frequencies, let's say up around the 8, 10, 15 kilohertz range, uh, you're still going to have comb filtering within that range, but it, it, the comb's going to look a little bit different. You're going to have a super fine comb. But as the frequency gets lower, let's say around the maybe 1000 hertz, 800 hertz, around that range, the comb starts to look a little bit wider. So you've got all these different frequency cancellations as well as coupling all taking place across the whole frequency range of, of an event. And that's just because you have added additional speakers to your system. So what does comb sound, uh, pardon me, comb filtering sound like? Well, the answer is it sounds like phasing. If you ever hear like a phase shifter with a guitar, how it moves in and out, that's what comb filtering is. And uh, basically, here's Here's what comb filtering sounds like. Okay, so back to our stage area when we have just our one speaker on each side. So once again, when you start adding speakers, you start introducing a lot of problems. Adding more cadmus does make it louder, sort of. However, the louder comes from the coupling of certain frequencies, as well as you get the cancellation of other frequencies. Uh, adding cadmus, as I said, does look good, but it really does introduce a lot of problems. And uh, it also causes problems when you're trying to mix a band and you're always sort of maybe complaining or thinking, you know, I just can't get, can't get the band to sound right or the horns don't sound right or something doesn't sound right. It was usually because you have comb filtering taking place. And the uh, biggest issue that I've seen, and this really does absolutely no justice to the band. And I'm sure you've seen events like this where people are stacking speakers all up on stage. Yes, it does look powerful, but the, but the thing is, is that unfortunately, it just becomes this wall of, um, I, I want to say sound, but it's just a big wall of, of a garbled mess. And this is why a lot of times, if you've ever been to events where you've seen speakers like this set up, a lot of these events all sound sort of the same. Um, I don't know how many events that you've, that you've heard, but when speakers are set up like this, a lot of them have a particular sound. And a lot of times it has to do with the comb filtering. You may, be, you, you may be experiencing comb filtering and not even known it. But I, I would highly recommend not setting up a sound system like this. This just does not work. <laughs> so to reduce comb filtering, because it's a physics issue, uh, you really can't I want to say reduce it for the most part, but you can sort of manage it. So if you do have multiple cabinets, don't stick them next to each other. Take the cabinets and splay them apart to allow for coverage. Because what you want is coverage. 
And if you need your system to be louder, I said, don't add the speakers, uh, don't add them sitting next to each other, all pointing the same direction. If you need, if it needs to be louder, use more powerful speakers and use speakers with a higher SPL rating. So keep it professional, uh, always do the best you can uh, when you're running sound because the bands are gonna remember you, the people are gonna remember you. Uh, but when you start adding speakers, you really are introducing issues. So as always, thanks for watching and uh, good luck.